Hi Manish, Brian Smith. Hi Brian. Very nice to meet you. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I do. I split my time between the University Hospital and our Veterans Hospital, so I have sort of the best of both worlds. I spend half of my week as a specialist, functioning in foregut surgery, mostly foregut oncology, a lot of anti-reflux surgery, and bariatric surgery. And then the other half of the week, I'm a true general surgeon. I do everything from head to toe, whether it be esophageal work or perianal work or skin work, etc. So, so, that, so I mean, that's that's really diverse and and and. You know, a little bit about myself. So I I spend half the week too doing two different jobs, as it were, mm -hmm. and half that week is in the university, which is essentially running my research lab, um, supervising and teaching postgraduate students, and then half the week in the OR. Given the diversity in the surgery that you do, where where do you find that you can use ICG the most, or what's your most frequent procedure? So I would say something as simple as a lab coli. Sure. It should be used in every single case because you don't know which patients are gonna have unusual anatomy or when it's gonna keep you out of peril. And that may be one case in, in three or four or 500, but if it saves you in that one yeah, case, absolutely. and it's not adding time to each case, it's not, I mean, literally it's the click of a button and you're able yeah. to visualize it. So to me, that, that's a no brainer. It should be used in every single case. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably the second most common is esophagectomy. So evaluating the gastric conduit, which an esophago anything anastomosis is a high risk anastomosis, just as a colo anything anastomosis yeah, is yeah. an inherently high risk anastomosis. And so to be using it routinely to try to figure out where do we create the anastomoses? Do we need to move them? Do we need to think about doing something different? It may, it's not gonna save you every time, but you don't know when it is gonna benefit you. If, and if you're not using it consistently, you're gonna miss those opportunities. Yeah. And, and I think well, you know, where we've seen this technology go in the last few years, where you've now got fluorescence capability on a true 4K camera, right. um, that really does hit home and punctuates the whole image guided surgery right. theme. Right. And, and I think very much that's going to be the future of surgery where imaging plays a huge central role. Right. And you know, in the first instance, you've got great resolution and you've got great clarity of vision. And then on top of that, you add in the adjunct of fluorescence on top of it. And you can really start looking at, at, at making the operation as safe and precise as possible because surgery is getting more precise. Right. But for it to be more precise, you need to have better imaging. Uh, and I think this intraoperative imaging of 4K resolution added on with fluorescence, I think is really exciting. Just out of curiosity, you, I assume, use it routinely for figuring out where you want to do your anastomosis. Yeah, yeah. How often do you feel like it has truly kept you out of an impending leak? I suppose the way of looking at it is how often do I end up changing my um, transaction point? Right. And I gotta say, it's probably one in 10 cases. Okay. And that translates to 10% of the time. Now, who knows what would have happened if I right. didn't use it, right. but I'm not willing to take that chance. Right. And, uh, and this is, you know, we hear people asking that, you know, let's see the real evidence behind this. Right. But I think a lot of us have got to a point where we can't see doing this type of surgery right. without this fail safe. Right. And, and actually, um, it, it, it's so ingrained now in the procedure right. that we get to this step of the operation, everyone in the OR knows what's happening next, mm -hmm. and it allows us to, to sleep better at night. Right. So we've talked a little bit about um, how this technology is progressing, and, and I think one of the, the really exciting things for us in our theaters have been the um, installation of the new 1688 cameras, sure. which combines 4K with fluorescence. Mm -hmm. um, and all the modes that you'd have from the 1588 with the Novodak sure. endpoint. So what are your thoughts on, on the new camera on the 1688? And do you think in any way it's enhanced your practice or you've been able to explore things in a different way? The, the, the new 1688, which I just recently had brought into our operating room, sort of opened my eyes in terms of the, the significant improvement in terms of visualization. So I, I can now say I've sort of experienced three historic platforms, yeah. and the newest one is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I'm blown away at the quality of the image that we've got in the 1688, and the ability to overlay the technology, it's, it's fantastic. When I got the 1688, it was like, wow, yeah. you know, this thing is, the resolution is so good that I can see 
nerves for me are important, sure. for example. So I think combining great resolution with the technology has just taken it to the next level. And, and that can only be better for our patients. Right. Certainly it's um, better for us as well in the procedures that we're doing.